Yo, so I just dropped a bolt in the engine bay, so I jacked up the car to try to find it. And let me show you guys something. Literally everything down here is just full of oil. What is up, Matoire family? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. For those of you that don't know, my name is Antonio Matoire and I own a 2017 BMW 340i and a 2001 325i. So in today's video, we'll actually be working on the E46. For those of you that missed my last video, me revealing the E46. So it has some issues that need to be addressed as well as some preventative maintenance. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. So as you guys can see, I have the F30 out here. I covered it since it's usually garage kept and I just cleaned it yesterday so I don't want any dust getting on it to make room for the E46 here in the garage so we're not working out in the hot sun. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get the E46 in here. So there's one main issue that I really want to address and that was the valve cover gasket. But when I'm driving, I smell like a burnt oil smell and it comes straight through the AC vents. And after doing a little bit of research, it led me to believe that that was the issue. And if you even look down here, you can see like some oil that had been leaking on these wires and yeah, you can see that right there. So in this video, it's pretty much gonna be like an E46 overhaul with just all the maintenance. So I might have to break it down into two separate videos. But let me show you everything that I got. So as you can see, I have everything laid out right here. But first up, this is a sensor for the coolant temperature. I got some new transmission fluid as well as oil filter. I will be changing the oil after I do all this maintenance. I got the serpentine belt and the AC belt. This is probably what we're gonna be doing today. This is the valve cover gasket. I got a new water pump. This is the oil filter housing gasket. So if it's not the valve cover gasket that's making the cabin smell like oil, it's probably gonna be this because this tends to leak too thermostat housing and a new thermostat so some of the items that i got might not even be going bad on the e46 like at the water pump and the thermostat housing all that i'm just doing it for preventative reasons and if i'm going to be using it as my daily driver i want it to be somewhat reliable so we're just going to go ahead and do all this to so pretty much completely swap out the cooling system with a whole bunch of new stuff i do plan on getting like the radiator hose and all that uh, later on but that'll probably be a separate video with the water pump because that requires me to drain the cool and all that Another problem that I mentioned in my last video was this fan having to be connected with two wires. Um, so I already went ahead and replaced this fan. This is a brand new electric fan. The old one is over there. So that was another issue with this car, but that's already been taken care of. I didn't make a YouTube video on it. So if you guys did want to check out me swapping out the cooling fan, uh, I actually made a TikTok on it. So you guys can also follow me there at Money Matwire. So let's go ahead and start with the valve cover gasket. And just for safety, before you start working on anything up here, be sure to disconnect the battery in the trunk. Okay, so here's the engine bay. When I bought this vehicle, it was missing the vanity covers on the engine, as well as that portion up there. I believe there should be some sort of like air filter housing, but since mine are already gone, next thing I'm gonna do is remove these spark plugs. So how I'm gonna do that is grab a flathead screwdriver, kind of lift up on here, and then pull out the wire, just like that, and you're gonna do that all the way down. Once all the wires are disconnected, you're gonna take off this harness that's kind of holding all the wires. And to do that, there's some tabs that you can just pry on with a, I'm gonna pry on with a flathead screwdriver. Anything in here that might be plastic will probably be very fragile and brittle. So just make sure that you're um, being very careful that nothing breaks since the car is very old. All right, so once you get it disconnected, you're gonna want to remove this ground wire right here and then move it out the way. You guys see how dirty that is? Yeah, that's really nasty. Anyway, next thing we're gonna do is disconnect um, this right here. Pretty much all these clips to get these wires out of the way. Uh, and then I'll probably go ahead and clean these up as well. So I'm actually gonna put on some gloves, but just look at, just from touching the wires, how oily my hands are and how oily the wires are, the lines. It's definitely leaking. But the next step, you're gonna remove all the ignition packs. They're all held in by 10 millimeter bolts. So let me go ahead and do that. So we unscrewed all the bolts for the coil packs. So just take them straight out. Next, we're gonna remove these cables. So one right here and one in the back. Right here, they are both eight millimeter nuts, just like the other ground cable was. So remove those. And then we'll actually remove the valve cover. Now that the little cables are gone, we are gonna remove the entire valve cover. So all these bolts around it are all 10 millimeter. So go ahead and remove those. They also have a rubber grommet underneath them. So remove the rubber grommet with the bolts. And this is what it should look like. 
just like that. It has a bolt, a washer, and then a rubber grommet on the bottom. Lastly, you want to disconnect this line right here. So you just pinch it and pull it, and then you can go ahead and grab the valve cover off. Y'all take a look at this. You can see along the edge, pretty much all the way around, it was leaking pretty bad. All the way around back there, even where the spark plugs were going, right in those whole areas, as you can see right here, oil definitely need to be replaced. Cause like I said, this is the portion that we're replacing this gasket along the outer edge, as well as these ones where the spark plug holes go. This was obviously much, much needed. So what I'm gonna do now is replace the gasket on the outer edge, as well as the ones in the middle. I have my new one right here. So once again, I'll do that off camera real quick and then I'll catch up with you guys afterwards. Guys, look at this thing. This is supposed to be rubber. At this point, look at that. It just snapped. This is rubber. This rubber has gotten so old. I literally just cut my finger. Okay, let me put a band-aid on. All right, sorry, I had to go get a band-aid. But that just goes to show you how extremely hard this gasket is. It literally just cut me. Um, it's supposed to be rubber like this, very flexible. And this one is not flexible at all. It is very hard, it feels like plastic at this point. And there's no doubt in my mind that this is the issue of why I'm smelling oil in the cabin. But let me go ahead and actually put some gloves on before I remove the rest of this. I think it's safe to say that that gasket has never been replaced. This is how it came off. Broke into a whole bunch of little pieces. It's cracking. You can hear it crack. So, like I said, at one point in time, that was rubber, and now it's just completely brittle. Even if the previous owner got an oil change, um, it probably didn't hold a lot of oil, and it was probably losing a lot of oil because of the gasket. So at this point, we're gonna replace the gasket, so we're gonna put the new rubber ones, and then this one, will go along the outer edge. So I'll go ahead and replace that and then show you guys what it should look like afterwards. And also, I went ahead and cleaned up just the head right along where the gasket will be sitting so that there's no oil anymore. And I also tried to clean up those pans down there where oil had leaked. So clean that up real nice. So that way, when you install the new one, you'll get a good seal. I'm gonna try to hold them while I flip it so they don't fall. And it's already falling. Work with me here, work with me. So I just got the valve cover back on. I am not even going to lie to you guys, that was a huge pain in the ass. So pretty much the issue I ran into is that the gasket, it just seemed too thin for the valve cover. So every time I would flip it over to place it back on the block, the gasket would just fall on out. So a couple of things I did to help myself out. So this cable was connected right here, which didn't allow me to get like a very good angle when just trying to flip it on to the head. So I took that off. Also, I ended up using some gasket maker and I kind of placed it like in certain areas along the inside of the valve cover. Yeah, I let it sit for about five minutes. So that way when I flipped it over, it kind of held the gasket in place so it wouldn't fall out. So that helped me out. But now that that's back on, I'm gonna go ahead and place all the bolts where they belong. Don't tighten them too tight. I would just hand tighten them. And then once we get them all in place, we have to torque them down to spec as well as go in a certain pattern. So that way the whole valve cover just kind of goes down evenly. Before I go ahead and reinstall these, I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up with some brakes cleaner, uh, just cause a lot of them are just really, really dirty. And I wanna make sure that it has a good seal when I put them back in. We're gonna head and tighten back down the bolts. So what I was talking about earlier for the star pattern, go here for example, and then come over here and then over there. You honestly just wanna make sure there's even pressure all the way around. So if you start on one side and go on the other side, you wanna go on the opposite side. Start in the middle, go on one side, you wanna go on the opposite side, just like that. On the torque spec is 10 newton meters, which is roughly seven foot pounds of torque. Once you torque them all down to spec, I went ahead and put my wires back uh, on the clips and secured those. So we're gonna put those ground cables back first. So those gray ones over here, one's gonna go here towards the back, the other's gonna go here towards the front. And then you screw back on the eight millimeter nuts to hold those in place. And go ahead and replace all your coil packs and screw those in as well. We're gonna go ahead and get this back where it belongs, clip it back into place, and then we're going to plug each coil pack back in. And don't forget this ground cable, once you clip everything back in, it goes right there with that last eight millimeter nut. So just remember when you're plugging back in your coil packs, just to press this silver portion down and lock them all in place. Once all of them are plugged back in, that's pretty much it. Just remember if you do have the vanity covers, place those back on as well as the little filter housing right there. 
Yo, so I just dropped a bolt in the engine bay, so I jacked up the car to try to find it. And let me show you guys something. So look at this, guys. It looks like this thing has been leaking oil for a while. I actually cleaned up some with the rag, but it was a lot worse than what it is. This was full of oil. That right there. Literally everything down here is just full of oil. So this is gonna require a lot of cleaning down here. So after sitting here making this video, I've realized that it's probably gonna be a little long. So I'm just gonna end it here as the valve cover gasket DIY. And I will do a part two for the oil filter housing gasket along with additional videos for the water pump and the thermostat housing. But to be honest, the install was kind of tedious. Um, what I thought was probably gonna take an hour and a half, two hours, took me almost four, five hours, simply because there was a couple of things that I missed and I wanted to tell you guys. So when unscrewing the valve cover, I only unscrewed the outer ones and completely disregarded the middle ones. So obviously the cover will not come off if you do not unscrew the middle portions as well. Once again, new chassis, not familiar, but we figured it out. And the second thing that took me forever, almost two, three hours, was just trying to figure out how to keep that gasket in the valve cover when flipping it without it falling out. The gasket just kept falling out, kept falling out. And I tried numerous things, but the only thing that seemed to work was the gasket maker. So I put this, like I said, kind of like little dots within the housing. So that way when I put the gasket down, um, I let it sit for about five, 10 minutes, but that stuff did the trick to hold it in place while I flipped it. Uh, you still have to be very careful. But like I said, that gave it just enough stick. So that way when I flipped it, it didn't come out. But just like that, that wraps up today's video. Thank you all that are following along with the E46 build. Obviously I discovered some other issues today. Pretty much everything on the bottom of the car has oil on it. So that's a whole nother issue in itself. But I have a feeling the more work I do on this car, the more I'm gonna find. So obviously we're gonna have a lot more videos coming with the 340 as well. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions on today's install, just hit me up on my Instagram at Matwire. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Like I said, new chassis. So I'm still kind of learning it myself. But if you do want to follow along with the build, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you like this video or it helped you out in any way, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out tremendously. And as always, Matwire fam, remember your goals and don't stop till you reach them. Peace. Excited just to see me, wish I felt the same way. Later on, she'll probably get a name change. People changing on me like they gain weight. I wish that I would.